Hello, and welcome to Great Hang, the greatest hang that's ever hanged. I'm your Hank Tim McLaughlin, coming to you with your other hang, Micah Fox. Hello, Micah. Yo, Tim, what up? What is up, yo? How are <laughs> you? Uh, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm doing great. Yeah? I got my boyfriend who's in a terrible mood. I'm in a bad mood. But I got my birthday weekend coming up. Birthday weekend. I rented us a little hotel a on the little beach. little hotel. Because I know you love to go to the beach. I hate going to the beach, but I like you having a nice birthday. So we go to the beach almost every birthday for you. Or we get some kind of nice dinner. This time we're doing both. Yeah, I, I'm excited. It should be a nice birthday. For your 28th birthday, I think it's worth doing, you know. Where it's does a milestone. the time go? It's a milestone. Well, Mike, are you excited to go to the beach? Also... Solo style show today. It's just the two, just the two of us. One is happy, one is mad. Just the two of us. Tim is mad. <laughs> I'm in a great mood. That's good. Cross the finish line on all my projects. Toes being a little baby. I'm going to get to go to the beach during a thunderstorm. Oh, my God. They can't see her. I'm just describing the cuteness with my emotion. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry you're in a bad mood and that you're a little bitch and that the second any pressure comes on your shoulders, you crumble like a paper bag. I don't think that's what happened. I don't think that's why I'm in a bad mood. Oh. I also, when pressure came on my shoulders earlier today at work, I fixed everything and made everything right. So, if anything, I'm fucking great under pressure, although I do choke in sports situations. Oh, yeah? I will straight up. Why? Because you're like drinking too much Gatorade while everyone else is playing? Yes. And, I get, I ch- <laughs> and I'm also eating a you're hot like, dog. Oh, I drank too fast. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I should have chewed more. And you're like <laughs> sucking the real athlete's dicks and you gag on that? No. And no. you're like, mm, this cum tastes like my shower drain? No, I don't do that either. No, actually, I hate to be a bad no. improv partner, but absolutely not. That never happened, and that's yeah. fucked up to say to me. A man who's in a bad mood. I'm not trying to fucking blow athletes right now, Mike. That's not the kind of games I'm trying to play on this damn show. Oh, you're trying to eat their ass instead? Yes, I like it when it's sweaty and all fucking... I like, But only the winners. Of course, the Because they played harder. <laughs> but anyway, uh, what was I saying before you fucking called me a loser or whatever? Is that what I did? Yeah. You said I, I choked under pressure or something at work, and that's why I'm in a bad mood. But that's not why I'm in a bad mood. I'm in a bad mood because I'm constantly disrespected at every turn of my fucking life. Yeah. I'm so sorry to hear about that. It's fine. It's whatever. <laughs> it's no big deal. I didn't win in the Queen of Hearts either. Some woman won it. What? But this is a man's club. Well, no. It's a club for Catholics, really. Yeah. And my atheist dad. You all know how... What an awesome role women have in Catholicism. None. Yeah, they have none. no role. Nuns. There's they're none nuns. at all. They're married to God <laughs> and Jesus. Nuns wear wedding rings because they're married to God. No, they call them nuns because that's what they get. They ain't get none. I always gets mine, but they yeah. get none. That's right, because you're a Catholic. That's right. I'm a good guy. Well, Micah, this has been catching up. Yeah. Anything else exciting happened this week? We did Nina Tarr's podcast. That'll be out in October, she said. Ooh. Yeah, that's really exciting. What else happened this week? I came back from Austin. I did a weekend in Austin. I met Joe Rogan. He told me I was really funny. You didn't meet Joe Rogan? I don't know. What do they know? Yeah, I guess they don't know. But uh, Danny Brown started following you on Danny Brown did start following on Instagram. star Danny Brown. Rap star. And rap star. Rapper star and rap star Danny Brown started following me on Instagram. Do we know why? We don't. We don't, but it's cool that he did. And he, it's not like he's just like one of those, like, you know, Lil B, the bass guy who just follows everybody who follows him. Now nah, he's only got like 14, 1,500 follow, uh, following people. Wow, that's pretty cool. Pretty did good. Did you meet him, do you think? I don't know. I never remember that. Oh, okay. And Red Band started following you? Oh, yeah, me and Brian, we go way back to yeah. a couple days ago when he started following me. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, you're in the you're in that circle now. Interesting, right? Yeah. I wonder what happened. I think, like, once you walk through the mothership, you, like, tripwire five social media assets, and it just... Yeah, you think it's, like, Minority Report when they walk through, and, like, the thing scans your eye, and it's like, Hello, Tim, this advertisement is perfect for you. Remember Minority Report? I actually never saw that, but I was going to oh. let you go. 
talking about pre-com, they got pre-cogs in that. They can predict the future pre-cognitive. Whoa. They're prematurely cognitive, they say. Yeah, I bet they are. Yeah. Well, that's fun. Toe and I, I worked all weekend, of course. Had a 12-hour day Saturday, really sucked. Had a 9-hour day Sunday, kind of sucked. Actually, Sunday really sucked, too. It was super busy because it was raining. And then, uh, you know, Monday worked. Today, went to work. So, pretty good all around week for me. Yeah. Did a pod with Jeff today. T- tough questions. That gets us right into our plugs. You got Damn anything to Tim. plug? God, you've worked almost as much as you maybe should have. What do you mean? For, like, if you worked in... I don't know day- why you're still getting on me about work when I work more than you now. I don't know if that's true. But Micah, we'll it's for that. sure true. You were in bed when I got home today. That You're in bed when I'm working sometimes. That is what called have, having different schedules is. Mm-hmm. And now you finally, what about the entire pandemic where I'm in meetings and they can hear you snoring in the background? Like regularly, we had to get a multiple room apartment for that problem. That wasn't a problem. It was funny. Everyone thought it was funny. They're like, this is hilarious. Your boyfriend's super funny with the way he snores. He works a regular schedule for how many months has it been? And now you work more than me. I work every day. Not all day. I was there I was there for 11 hours today, Micah. This is not a fight we should have for the podcast. This is all a right. fight we should save for the hotel room. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Do you have anything to plug? I was bringing up plugs. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to be at, uh, in Miami for Rosh Hashanah. I'm doing a, a Jew show at a Hillel. I don't know if you can go, but if you can, fucking check that out. It's going to be fun. They should call it Ha Ha Shoshana. It's Rosh Hashaha. Rosh Ha. Yeah, but they got there. I don't, I don't know how to say it. Ha Ha Shoshana is Rosh better. Rosh Hashaha. That's what it is. That's not good. Tim? Ha Ha Shoshana is better. It reads good. It doesn't, it doesn't say good. Yeah, it don't say good, but it do read good. So check out Mike at our Jew Festival in Miami where all the Jews live. I will be in the opposite of Jewtown. I will be in Germany. <laughs> no, I'll be in Little Rock, Arkansas, oh. <laughs> September 13th through the 16th. I'll tell them the I'll, Germany of the West. The Germany of the middle of the country. So I'll be in Arkansas with, uh, I'm letting Tom Takar headline for me. And just a little slight plug here. Check out Tom's new special, Takar Noir. Yeah, we watched it last night. Lots of lulls by us, even though we've heard some of those jokes I've before. heard absolutely all of those jokes before. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, is this guy doing old jokes old on his jokes. special? I was like, uh, heard it before, honey. Maybe write something new. Yeah, you that's know? why it's called Takar Noir, because it's time to go to put those to bed. <laughs> oh, yeah? You want to try it again? You want yeah, because it's time to sunset those jokes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was trying to get to. Well, that's good. Tom, but it's very great special. You can check it out on YouTube. It's on 800 Pound Gorilla. Check out Takar Noir. Uh, very funny guest of the show. And, you know, I would say villain and bitch of the show as well, Tom Takar. Yeah, you may remember him as defending orange juice in cereal. Yes, you may also remember him as being a constant bitch all the time. But funny. Got to give him that. Yeah, very funny. Funny special, so... That's good, and I am letting him headline for me in Arkansas, which will be good. And then uh, what else do I got? Oh, of course, every first Sunday of the month, you can check out my advice show that Micah is also on all of them, but you but I do everything for it. So you can check out <laughs> my advice show at the gutter the first Sunday of every month. And uh, if you want to come by, it, it the next one is August 6th. And I'm going to, if you're on the Patreon, you've already seen the new episode, or you've already seen last week's, we film it and put it on the Patreon. If you're not on the Patreon, check it out, patreon.com slash great hang. But we will be putting out a little snippet of the live show coming out here soon. The live show was funny as fuck. The live show was funny as fuck, and I have not even looked at Reddit yet. Shane sent me something, though. Uh oh. For the next one. He goes, I think this would be good. It's from Shane, who hated being there the whole time. Shane loved it. You, you keep talking about it as though Shane was furious about it. Because it's funny it. about that. But Shane was, when, when I was over at his house looking at how to fix his uh, uh, thing the other day, he was like. <laughs> his boner. <laughs> yeah. Well, I fixed it with my ass. Yeah. So. 
But then he was like, that show is really good, man. It was really fun and really funny. I really like it. Hell yeah, dude. And that's so, Shane Torres. Shane Torres, good guy, funny guy. I, I've seen all of his material, and it's just so much fresher than other comedians that yeah. just came out with a special. But Yeah, Sh- Shane's is so fresh that it's only been taped and not aired. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> But I'm excited to see this brand new hour Tom has in Arkansas, September 13th to the 16th. <laughs> Guaranteed new jokes. You won't hear a single one from the special. <laughs> yeah, but Tom's going to come out and be like, be like, hey, didn't that last guy suck? He do, do, he do be doing that. <laughs> you know what he does sometimes? He'll be like, I heard this club was haunted. That's why Tim got so many boos during his set. <laughs> Fucking rude ass bitch. <laughs> or sometimes he'll go up because I'll, you know, I'll pander to these hillbillies to sell koozies. And he'll go up and be like, you know, he doesn't like any of you. He's just like, oh, I'm going to act like a fat idiot so all these idiots like me. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Tom, stop telling him that. Tom, you're fucking with our koozie money. I need to sell koozies, so come out, buy some koozies. Also, I'm going to start making shirts that says, uh, my wife is a bitch, my husband is an asshole, and it, and you can wear them together. Tim's been talking about this shirt pairing <laughs> since I've met him. This is like this is like his masterpiece he's been designing. It's so dumb. I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it'll be funny. And Tim, I want to take this opportunity to apologize to you for fighting with you earlier. I am sorry that I didn't acknowledge that you are the hardest working man who's ever lived. Yeah. You also shouldn't fight with people who are in a bad mood. You should just let it go. Yeah, but I was doing that for our fans, which you always tell me I have to work harder for the show. You do have to work hard. I mean, but that's not the kind of work I'm talking about. I'm talking about okay. listening to oh, the well, show. Okay, micromanager. He's like, you, know, you have to work harder on the show. Then I take a little initiative by being a piece of shit to you. And yeah. then you get all mad about it because you haven't eaten food all day. It's true. I finally had a sandwich. Here's what we need to do. We can only be mean about Tom and Tom's special that was very funny, even though we had heard all the jokes. But it was very funny. And you guys should check it out to Car Noir. And that is that for plugs. Oh, okay. Next segment. All right. Hot takes, hot Micah. Takes. Giving us her hot takes. You, wait, you don't have any new bits? You don't want to spit that bit? I do have a new bit. I have a bit. Okay, so here you want to. I've yeah. been working on it. Okay, so Listen, I. This is him. Okay. I'm here for you. So I was at work. We were talking. We were at work talking about stories, you know, like from our. I was mainly just talking at work. And I was like, uh, I was like, when I was a freshman in high school, my religion teacher grabbed me by my neck and choked me up against the wall you know yeah and i and my, uh, the person i worked with was like oh i have a trauma story too they uh, one up your trauma story no but i was like this isn't a trauma story oh my story is funny you know like i was a child and i made a grown man break at work you know? You're a regular Bart Simpson. I am. I'm like a tough Bart Simpson Was character. your teacher like, why I ought to? Kind of. He was like Mr. Wilson and shit. So, I, so what happened, Micah, is we're in this room. It's got no windows. And every time he would talk, I would turn the lights off. And all the, the entire class would yell, you know? Yeah. That was pretty funny. And instead of moving me away from the light, he decided to choke me. You know, it's pretty good. He's like, he's going to I'm going to take your lights out. <laughs> yes, of course. That's good. That's a good tag. And later in the year. So that was later in the year. That was that happened like, you know, towards almost the end of the end of freshman year of high school. I was a 14 year old boy who made a grown man choke a child at work. Right. Pretty cool stuff for a kid to do. I really got in his head. But it all started because it started, I think, at 9-11. You know, because like you remember 9-11. I forgot. All right. Well, I remember it very vividly because we were walking down the hallway and there was a scuttlebutt in the hall. Yeah. They were like, something's happening. Something crazy's happening. Blah, blah, blah. So I go to the teacher and I say, Mr. Doyle, something's happening on TV. We have to turn the TV on. And he said, Mr. McLaughlin, you're not tricking me into turning on prices right again. That was September 11th. We had been in school for like a week and a half, and I had already tricked him into turning on the TV. 
And I think so. That's my nine eleven story. So that's what I want to work on. Is getting, is this your bit, or did you trick me into hearing two different stories? No, those are the bits I want to work on okay. getting them together. Yeah. I want to. I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to decide how to make that flow because I think it's funny mm. that I had a, that a grown man choked a child at work. I think that is funny. Yes. And then, but I also I think that nine eleven story is funny. That I that we I didn't get to see nine eleven because I was the boy who cried Price is Right. That's funny. I didn't get to see nine <laughs> yeah. eleven. I mean, I think there's your angle. I mean, I would have seen the second tower go down. If you could have seen that live, and instead you lost your chance at history because you were too much of a piece of shit in school. Right. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you think it has any legs? Do you think it's funny? Yeah. So wait, but the nine eleven thing you said happened first. The, well, yeah, because it happened on September 11th, which is right. at the beginning of the school year. So he already didn't trust you by September 11th? Right. That's, that's How many <laughs> weeks into school? I, I said it was two weeks into school. And you were already <laughs> such a piece of shit that you couldn't watch 9-11? Yeah. Also, he had a... What did you do before that? The light switching thing? That was after. Right. But before, what did you do then? Before 9-11? Yes. I had tricked him into turning on the TV so we could Just watch Price, Price is okay. Right. And then when Price is Right was on, everyone was like, yeah, Price is Right. How did you trick him then? Were you like, hey, they made an attack on the Pentagon? No, I said, Mr. Doyle, uh, there's a, I, I, it was something about, I like, yeah, it was like a similar type of 9-11 thing where I'm like, I heard that something crazy is going on on the news and you need to turn on the news. The boy who cried wolf blitzer. Yeah. Now that's pretty good. <laughs> it's bad. That's not bad. But that's how you have to you have to frame it. You're talking about two different stories. They don't flow together. You tell one and then. But you it's tell all the about other. the same guy. Yeah, you tell one and then you tell the other. But one, but you can't. You told them backwards in a way that did not work. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. You tell the 9-11 story first, and then if that one goes well, then the audience likes you enough to tell the other one. If not, you move on. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, because I like the one about him choking me. I think it's really funny. Because when he chokes me... It also doesn't have a punchline. It's just a. It's just funny that you think that, that you got one over on him. No, well, the punchline was... I, I wrote it down. I have it written down somewhere here, in here, but the punchline was... You pitched me the bit without the punchline? I'm pitching, I'm pitching the bones of it, bitch. Those is just the bones. Here, I can tell... I'll tell you exactly what I wrote you down. You gotta here. pitch the punch. Well, I don't pitch know... Pitch the punch, all Jerry! All right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on. Getting choked by a teacher? Oh, wait. No. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Having sex with fat chicks. While we do this, I can pitch you my bit. All right. Oh, wait. I have a trauma story about school. Get, getting choked by a teacher is is not trauma. That is me driving a man. That is me driving the man to a point where he chokes a child at work. In that moment, I was a Joker-esque villain. Oh, that's the punch <laughs> that you had that you searched for? Yeah. That you searched through five fucking pages of fat chick jokes to find? There was only one fat chick joke, and that's a classic. Yeah, but it took up a lot of space. Yeah, it did. But, uh, yeah, that's the bit. and But I think it's funny. The, it is funny, but here's here's the thing. you got to tell it in a way where you're less like, look how cool I am, and tell it more in a way that leads the audience into wondering what happens next. Okay. I don't know what that is yet. Let's. You wanna, we can dig in real hard right now. You but when he it? choked me, I go, you can't do that. And he goes, oh, no. And you didn't tell that part. And then he apologized a whole bunch, and then I sat down like I was the king of the world. And after the class, he held me back, and he he apologized with tears in his eyes. And then I laughed when I left the room. Maybe there's a tie back to the nine eleven thing, and be like, and he's like, just blamed the Jews for it. Oh yeah, sorry the sorry the, the spirit of uh, Elijah came over me, and I had to choke you out. Yeah, maybe. Teen tears don't melt steel hearts. Yeah, maybe you could um, uh, uh, Chokanika, Hana Choka. No, nah, you're getting farther away from it. Chokanika. Yeah, that's bad. That's worse than Rosh Hashanah. Ha ha Shana. <laughs> ha ha Shana is so much better. God damn. Jews are supposed to be like the best at comedy and they came up and with And we still are. You came up with. Ha ha Shana. You came up with what? Read that punchline again. Having sex with fat chicks is the same as having sex with no, skinny chicks. No, don't go. You just close your eyes, pretend it's a guy. 
Tim. That's a classic. Tim. Bomb like a man. I bomb like a man. I did it. <laughs> I closed with that joke at Barbershop last Thursday. Yeah. And I go, well, that bombed. Did it? Yeah. I go, I <laughs> thought that that would get some kind of laugh, possibly a standing ovation. Yeah. But you, none of you seem to like it in any way, shape, or form. That's a bummer. Anyway, your next comic. <laughs> and I just brought up the next guy. All right. What's your little bit, bit? Bit okay, boy. so mine is an idea for a movie, mm-hmm. all right? It's called Weekend at Babies. Oh, well, this isn't much of a bit. This Tim, is just no, a movie. But I'm pitching it. This is my bit. All, all right, right, all right. Okay, all right. so here's the log line. A high-powered businesswoman has a stillbirth and pretends the baby is alive so that way she can go on four months maternity leave. So what happens after the four months, though? Like, what? What is that? The conflict of the movie? So like, no, the conflict is the whole time. Like, you know, people are trying to get a hold of her, and she has like, and so she's like on vacation, living her like eat, pray, love, and all that shit. Did you and fart? No, that was a squeak of the couch. Okay. And God, I'm in the middle. So Sounded I'm, like you fucking farted. So like, they'll be like Zoom calling her, and she'll have her fucking like dead baby, and she'll be all animating it and shit. And then there will be why would she like, need to do that though? Because it's weekend at babies. Why wouldn't she have the baby in the back in like a crib decomposing, but then like. The thing, like the, the well, like, most of the time she's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, it's sleeping or it's oh, it's at the like doctor. Like Ferris Bueller style, there's like a, a a voice recording of it crying or something. Totally, but, but it's her some, crying. But it's her crying. At some point, like her parents are gonna want to see it and shit like that. You know? Oh yeah. Well, then she gets a different baby. The baby shower is gonna be off the hook. Oh yeah. Maybe well, the, yeah. I don't know. It, I feel like it's got a lot of holes, but it could be good. I feel like the yeah. I guess the conflict. Are you kidding me? Every time I think about having to animate a dead baby, I die laughing. I I guess I don't know. I don't. I guess I just don't find dead baby. I've never found dead baby stuff that funny. I don't. Well, it's funny when you think about having to pretend it's alive. Yeah, that is funny. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like that you're part like is all funny. like goo goo gaga, and it's a dead baby and but stuff. But remember when dead baby jokes were really popular? See, that's the thing is, I remember hearing about dead baby jokes, but not hearing a lot of dead baby jokes. Oh, well, I heard a bunch of them. And anyways, and I never liked them. I was like, come on, this that is, baby could have been somebody. This is the, for all the women who've um, had miscarriages and stillbirths, you know, and don't get to and need humor to get through their trauma. Yeah, so you're the one who's going to do it? Yeah. The, the woman who's never done any of that? The woman who's never been pregnant? Yeah. I haven't even had an abortion, let alone a miscarriage. Let's go. That's called purity, my good bitches. It is called purity. But I like, I'm thinking like for like. Weekend at Babies is a funny name. I think it's more of a trailer than a full movie. No, what makes it good is it's a full movie. Is there scene after scene of this? Yeah. See, you're laughing because yeah. it's the it's the excess. It's the excess that makes it great. Charlotte Weatherton thought she was going to be a happy mother. Right. <laughs> Little did she know her life was going to get turned upside down. Honestly, though, if we wanted to make this an actual movie people would watch, you could just have it be a woman who pretends to get pregnant and have a baby to go on maternity leave. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy. But that's a... <laughs> That's a movie Charlotte Weatherton never thought she could catch a break. Mm-hmm. But then she came up with an idea and her world turned upside down. That's actually a good sell album. Don't steal that, everybody. All right, so that's Spit That Bit. <laughs> so don't sell the one that doesn't involve a dead baby. The one where a woman pretends to get pregnant so that she can go on maternity leave. Don't steal that one. Don't steal that one. Don't steal either of them. They're both good. <laughs> I'm going to make a... The thing is, I find joy... You know, you're supposed to... I've been listening to Deepak Chopra and... Um, you I've know, been listening to Tupac Chopra, this Indian rapper I like. Okay, and he was saying how you have to constantly ask yourself, like... Who am I? What do I want? And, you know, I find a lot of difficulty answering that question, which is why, you know, I'm here with you and I'm at my job that I am. But then I was like, what would really give me joy? Mm. Writing a movie about a woman pretending a dead baby is alive so that she can get a few months off of work. I think that is a very good idea, Micah. That's Deepak Chopra. So don't get after my, uh, he has a British accent. Hello, Micah. I think <laughs> it is very good. Okay, are you ready for hot takes? 
No, you butt. Let's get at it, baby. All right, that was good. I Weekend think we got a lot. I think we babies. got a lot out of that. This baby ain't alive, but she's having the time of her life. It's weekend at babies. All right. Okay. Oh. Who so- uh, Who would have thought a dead baby could be so fun? Coming this summer. I have an up- weekend at babies. <laughs> Well, I was trying to think like the baby is dead, but her maternity leave is still kicking. Yeah, it it would be. Uh, oh, wait, how how would it go? Hold on, hold on, hold on. The baby stopped kicking, but that's when her life kicked into another gear. Yeah, the baby was <laughs> still born, but she is still going on vacation. <laughs> yeah, the baby may be still born. But that's not keeping her from still going on vacation. <laughs> Weekend at babies. Uh, okay. This is, um, before we get into our thing, I have a um, I have an update on one of our previous hot takes. Whoa, which one, damn bitch, which one? Don't leave us hanging. Um, the one where it was a table full of white people and they were like, hey, white oh, people. Oh, I was supposed to put that picture on the last episode. I didn't do it. Sorry. Well, now's here's your chance at redemption. So apparently the guy who originally asked that question was white. Um, he actually look at this photo. I mean, he doesn't look incredibly black. He doesn't look black at all. All right. But I'm not I'm not going to 23 and me his ass. All right. You know, nah, say you're it black, could just, black. he could it could just be too much of a flash on the camera. He could be very light skinned, but the flash was just too bright. But listen to this headline about this man. About. About Jonathan Perkins, the man who asked the question, if you see a group of white people, mm. do you, if there's no black people, do you say anything? Do you notice? Uh, the headline says, a law student plays the race card and gets busted big time. Whoa. In late April, Jonathan Perkins, the guy who asked the question, a third year law student at UVA wrote a letter to the editor that was published in Virginia Law Weekly, the school's student newspaper. In his letter, Perkins claimed that he was harassed by UVA University police while walking home from a party, purportedly on account of his race. He's African American, it says in parentheses, because you can't tell from his photo. Ah, Perkins said he was moved to share the story because it is important for my classmates to hear a real life anecdote illustrating the myth of equal protection under the law on may 5th after a thorough investigation this is now Ooh. in italics it's a, re- re- a correction may the fifth be with you um that university of virginia police officers had mistreated an african american american law student the individual acknowledged that his story had been a fabrication made the Whoa. whole thing up for clout for clout he said i wrote the article to bring attention to the topic of police misconduct he said in a written, written statement the events in the article did not occur what the fuck why would you ever do why would you do that especially I guess. when you're trying to be a lawyer you're yeah. going to fucking create false evidence before you get out of a law school? He hadn't gotten Guilty, to that part. Guilty, judge and jury. Wow, that's crazy. Fuck that dude, yo. So he is just a known race card shit bag shit stirrer. That's crazy. That's cool. Good for him. Anyway, I uh, thought that would be a fun update. Yeah? So you just slammed your phone down weren't ready for the next take? Yep. Well, do you want to hear the, the, an actual hot take? Or yeah, I want to hear an actual hot take. I like the update, but we got to get a hot take in here, baby. Okay, this is an Am I the Asshole. All right, I like these. All right, okay. They give me they give me two choices. Are they or aren't they? Yeah. Um, am I the asshole for not wanting to give my wealthier sister the lion's share of the inheritance? Uh, no. I don't know. Okay. I don't know how the relation is. I don't know if they're half sisters. I don't know if they're adopted. I don't know if they're stepkids. I don't know the situation, right? But you should just split it in half. I don't know why one should get more than the other. Unless it's unless it's written in the will one gets more than the other, then you should just give each other 50% of everything. That's just how it should go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then what if it was written in the will? Then she should get more. If it's written in the will that her sister should get more, then her sister should get more. And you can fight it, but you're going to lose, much like this black man who lost to these fabricated cops. That's right. Fabricated cops could be a name. Okay. Um, so... All right, but you think he is the asshole for not wanting it, if, uh, if it's not written? If it No, if, if it's not written, you should... Well, no, he shouldn't give her the lion's share if it's not written in there. Okay. They should split it 
Yesterday, my parents set me... So, the people are still alive. Okay. Me, a 31-year-old man, my two brothers, 32 and 34-year-old men, and my sister, a 41-year-old female, down to discuss their will. Okay. My parents informed us that they want to split it five ways. There's four siblings. My sister gets two-fifths, while the three of us brothers each get a fifth. Their reasoning is that my sister sacrificed her childhood for our family, so it's only fair she gets compensated. But why did she do that? Why did she sacrifice her... Why? I'll continue. Okay. In our childhood, my father's business partner screwed him over, so there was a period where we were broke and in debt. My parents had to work multiple jobs to keep us afloat, and my sister babysat us while our parents worked. All she had to do was feed us and keep an eye on us. We were pretty calm kids, so all we did was play games and do our homework. It probably wasn't thrilling, but not exactly a tremendous hardship. I complain to my parents, along with my brothers, that it's insane that they want to give my sister two-fifths of the inheritance over that, especially since she's financially the best off out of all of us. She doesn't have any kids and a dual income with her partner. My parents said they're disappointed in us and said we need to reflect on ourselves. My sister didn't say shit while my parents spoke, but texted us afterwards that she had zero intention of taking the two-fifths, but we were all assholes. Am I the asshole for feeling like this split is unfair? All right. See, the, first of all, the parents are assholes because they should have known that that's how that was going to go down. They absolutely should have known if three people are only getting X amount and one person is getting more than them, they're all going to be pissed. I mean, just watch one episode of Succession. You'll see it happen. Secondly, uh, they, I, if that was me, if that was my family, I would probably be getting more money because everyone loves me the most, but... That was, so that would be cool, I guess. I would be pretty cool with it. But um, uh, I, if, if it's written what in What are you talking about? It's just you and Jack. You're right. just basically saying you're more loved than Jack. I mean, I wasn't trying to say it in those exact and terms. And Jack has way more money than you. Interesting. So, so, sociopaths tend to do well. So, 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 so sociopaths. I, uh, no, Jack, <laughs> Jack's good. But... I, here's the thing. You think your brother's a sociopath, but you're no. not? You just bragged about manipulating a teacher into choking a child. I mean, it was funny. My brother, my brother's not a sociopath. He's a good man. But what I like, but if my parents were like, we're going to give your brother 100% of the money, I would be like, okay, whatever. I mean, I would be pissed about it probably a little bit because I'd be like, damn, I wish I got a little bit of money, but no, it's you just their choice. Came home- Furious that you were disrespected because you weren't remembered for a show. Yeah, but uh, but also, and you think you wouldn't mind losing all of your inheritance? Yeah, but I don't have that money anyway, and I'm not I'm not counting that money. So I've never counted that money in my life. So it's not like it's not like that money's mine anyway. That's my feeling everything, with this shit. Everything could fall. Everything could fall apart, and that money could be gone in an instant from something that happens. You know. That's right. So who cares? But like, if they want to give it to Jack, they can give it to Jack. I don't give a fuck. But they, uh, but I think that they should respect what their parents want to do with their money. They didn't earn the money. The kids didn't go out and work for that money. That's my thing with it. I'm like, you don't. Why do you get a say in any of this? Right. They shouldn't get a say. Your parents. Your dad got screwed over by his business partner. He was broke. They somehow worked it up so that they could have. Any kind of money for you kids, and then you now you want to fucking get mad at them because they worked really hard so that you could have a life. Give them, they let them give their money to whatever they want. Also, I don't know. We're we're missing the most important thing, which is he doesn't acknowledge how like the sacrifice his sister made, which was probably significant. She's ten years older. She was a teenager who yeah. probably wanted to like go out and do fun things, and instead had to keep an eye on your fucking brat ass. And you're like, well, now she doesn't have kids, so she has a lot of money. She doesn't have kids because you fucking got worn out taking care of you and your fucking brother's dumbass. You were probably real pieces of shit, and that's why she didn't even want kids. Maybe. That's possible, but I just think that you should respect whatever the person wants to do with the money they earned. Okay, well, I'm glad you listened to me, and, uh, okay. I, I, I agree with you, but I don't care about the sister part. I Here's, don't care about that. That is the most important part, and you no, should No, the care most about important it. part is the people that earn the money make the decision of the money. He should say thank you to his sister. I mean, yes, it's true about the parent, like, the parents shouldn't, shouldn't give the kids any money, because they're being fucking assholes. Yeah. But they, he should, but the fact that he's like, she didn't really do anything, I think sucks, and he sucks. And why do I assume that these people are Indian? I can't. I don't think they're Indian. It's, I, every time I've read this through, I'm like, they're definitely Indian. And I, 
I can't figure out why. It didn't read Indian to me. It reads Indian to me. I wonder if there's a way to figure this out. What's the guy's name? There's it's it's like been screen grabbed because it was on Twitter, so I don't even have uh, the screen name. Maybe sometimes they put the um like the original post. In what the are book. people saying? Where people agree with me? Well, yeah, a lot of people are like. I mean, I agree with you. Like, you shouldn't be talking about somebody else's money. Like, it's their decision if they want to give it to you. Yeah. If you want to make money, go make your own fucking money, bro. I don't give a fuck about making money. But, you know. All she's had to do is feed us and keep an eye on us. He's a fucking moron. Yeah, but that's her time. She gave up her time for that. Time is... She gave up her childhood for that. And what is time, Micah, we all know? Time money. is an ephemeral con- construct. No, time is money, my oh. man. Oh. All right. Well, that's good. Now it's time for the best segment of the show. Ding, 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 ding. It's time for the news. No, it's not. Oh. It's not. Why would you think that? It's time for you to fall in love with me, which I think we really need right now because I'm feeling a rift. You're feeling a rift in our relationship today? Yeah. I feel like there's. it's a- more adversarial than normal. I feel like we're not vibing. On the show today or just We've had moments of vibing on the show. I think it's because I'm in a bad mood. Well, I think this question, um, for those of you who know, the segment is Arthur Anderson. Is that his name? Whatever. Came up with 36 questions uh, to ask on a date to make people fall in love. And by the time you get to the end, you should be in love with each other. Okay. Right? And we should be asking um, us and our guests, but it's just you and me. So now we'll fall in love with each other. And so, Tim, today we're on question number two. All right. The question is, would you like to be famous, and in what way? Uh, I guess the answer, since I'm in the uh, since I'm in the industry, by the industry, of course, I mean the business. Mm-hmm. I uh, I guess I would I would like to be famous, but I don't want to be ultra famous. I would like to be Doug Stanhope famous. Mm, yeah, where I can go to a town. Sell it out, hang out with some cool people who are my fans, and then go to another town, sell it out, and hang out with some cool people that are my fans. But I could still go to the mall and maybe like six people would be like, hey, it's Tim. But not everybody mobs you, you know? Yeah, I feel the same way. That whole like Beyonce lifestyle and like where you're just shrouded all the time. It seems horrible. I mean, like, yeah, they live in like a two the most expensive mansion in Malibu, right? They just bought that. And that does seem nice, but I'm like, is that how much your freedom costs? Yeah, I don't but, know. You but know? Doug Sano makes like a million dollars a year off of door deals and shit. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, but he lives I'm saying my, the life I'm picking would be just comfortable enough. It's yeah. not like I know. I'm making the point about how the I'm making your point. I know, and I'm saying it's and I'm saying it's not worth it. That's not having all that money isn't worth it. You should I just agree. have some money. You just have some money enough. Yeah, enough to. That's why I don't understand these fucking billionaires. I'm like, you really want attention for being exploitative? People yeah. People are gonna fucking come for your throat, dude. Yeah, bruh. Quit exploiting people, bruh. As Deepak Chopra would say, "Oi, mate, won't you stop exploiting people, bruv? It ain't fair, in it. It ain't fair, in it, bruv. You're it gonna get right. yourself in rubble then. We should be getting universal basic income, in it. Yeah, I don't want to get in Bonnie or whatever they say. Yeah. Fucking. You bullshit. just saw Ocean Eleven. It's just Ocean's Eleven you're quoting. No, I'm quoting. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yes. Wrong. Yes. Correct. No. no. Oh wait, maybe it yeah. is. Yeah. Huh. I thought. It, no. 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 I'm quoting uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. No, you're right not. Now. But, um, Tim, are oh, you Oh, yes, I... Oh, because he, it's with uh, Don Cheadle. Yeah. I was thinking of the other black guys that robbed the place in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Racist. But they're all British. And is that something? Don Cheadle's not actually British, but he's British in the movie. I mean, what's the difference? I can never tell if an actor is British or not. I'm like, I don't care anymore. Stop. I'm not... I'm going to... I'm done being wowed. Dude, it's wild when you when you hear someone and you're like, holy shit, Spider-Man's British? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm like, good job being an actor, good job. Why did, why Spider-Man gotta be British now? First he's British, then he's Puerto Rican, what's next? He's from the future and another Spider-Verse? I don't even, jeez uh, Louise. Are you in love with me now? Yeah, I think so. 
You didn't even ask me the question back, but... Hey, Micah, how famous would you like to be? I didn't say I wanted to be famous at all. Oh, okay. If you if you wanted to, if you were going to be famous, how if you do you want to be famous and how famous would you like to be? Um, I think I'd like to be famous posthumously. Oh, in your death. Yeah. Okay. For what? I don't know, for like being right about everything, which is not something you can prove while you're alive. Uh, I guess that's true. All right. Well, then I'll I'll do that too, I no, guess. No, too late. You picked yours. <laughs> you picked your Doug Stanhope living in Tombstone life. All right. Well, that's fine. No, he doesn't live in Tombstone. He lives in um, Bisbee. Bisbee, Arizona. First, he gives out his address. He's those a Those stalkers out there. I know. He, yeah, that he's famous <sighs> to the point where he can give his address out and he's still alive. And people come hang with him. Yeah, would you want that? I wouldn't give my address out, but... Fuck no. But I, I do like hanging with people after the shows and stuff. I like that. Tim, I bought a bunch of lottery tickets for us. That's good. I you weren't too bad of a mood to notice what I did. I bought a bunch of lottery tickets, too. Not as many as I did, man. That's good. And uh, <laughs> if we win, let's say we win, are we still doing this pod? Yeah, we're going to build a full-ass studio and get a whole team. That'd be sick. And then it'll be... Good, because we'll oh, have all. Oh, then we could make weekend at babies. We could if we win the <laughs> if we win a billion dollars in the lottery. How we can mad win. would everyone on the planet be if like they're like, oh, I'm hungry, oh, I my house burned down, and I'm like, I'm gonna make weekend at babies. We could probably get, <clears throat> we could probably get a religious thing to fund it if we can be like this. If we can like kind of change the script a little bit and be like this is an anti-abortion oh yeah movie. sanctity of life yeah and then we can we can scam like some churches out of money and so then we can get money from churches to make this hilarious film called weekend at babies i would like to take money out of the hands of the church yeah we, we don't even need to win the lottery to do this i'd be like look at what your tithing went to fucking dumbasses we gotta scam the church that's what i'm saying so i think we could do it but let's see we'll figure it out we'll figure it out but i'm sorry if we're not vibing today i'm in a little bit of a bad mood my boot is getting better and better as the show goes on because you fell in love with me just now i think it is because i fell in love with you but i am also tired but my mood always gets a little better when we get to the best segment of the show reviews you, oh, oh i was sorry i was pulling them up Reviews, reviews for, for the, the podcast. podcast this is where i go on apple itunes and look up five star reviews that you the listener leaves which you have not left in a while and would appreciate it if you left but you don't have to but we would like just it just fucking if you do it right now you little pig you little listen pig uh, all right listen. fucking listening for free cost you nothing to leave a review leave a five star review while you're at it little piggy you don't even deserve to listen to this show anyway <laughs> All right, well, little pigs, uh, little YouTube pigs, what's going on? T shout out to all the YouTube pig commenters. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube right now, of course, smash that like button. Go ahead, hit that bell for notification. God, oh, you're I'm... being Bonnie. Oh, yeah, you're being Rub Bonnie Rubble. And then subscribe, bitch. I mean, what do I got to even tell you? Hey. It's time to read comments. So leave your comments. We'll read them. This first one's from Alex. I feel like it's time for me to start appreciating appreciating the anime culture just to troll Micah. Anime is the new news. By the way, Micah's new segment sounds promising. Hell yeah. Anime is tight. We but trolling me sounds not promising. But we should talk about anime on no, the show. I, it was. So, I cannot believe that happened. I look away for two <laughs> seconds, and the show becomes the most boring thing that I've ever witnessed. 26 minutes, 23 seconds. I think this is from Alan Thickdick. Uh, quote, Mike, get the shoe polish. LMFAO, ha, ha, ha. That was the best throwaway line. Fantastic episode, besides the fact the news was missing. Boo. Ha, ha, ha. Mike was awesome. Dude, people love the news, Michael. We really should bring it back. No, people hate it, and you have to win it back, and you won't. Because you're dumb. And what, what is the shoe polish line? I forget. Uh, my, we were talking about um, how we were all white and weren't able to talk about uh, that thing that you brought up. Oh. And so I told Mike to get the shoe polish so oh. one of us could be black. <laughs> Kyle Park says, great ep. Happy to see Mike doing well. Ping pong table is a great tip. 
when is Micah's special coming out? Great question. Um, it's still being edited, and then once that's done, it has to be sold. So it may never come out. It but may never see the light of day. But let's hope that it does. You know what I mean? The writers are on strike. These fucking streamers need something to show. That's so true. I think we're well positioned to scab. So keep your eyes peeled, and I'll, I'll let you know. Robert F. says, "All the new se- I love all the new segments. Mike Adorables fall in love with me. Oh, Mike Adorables. That's fun. My- oh, is that what my fans are called? Mike Adorables. So it's Micah and then Adorables. Yeah. All together in one word. Yeah. Fall in love with me. And Tim, Tim, and, Tim and to Munster's anime talk is putting this show right back on track. Tim, are you a fan of Dragon Ball Z? I am a fan of Dragon Ball Z. I'm a fan of all of the Dragon Balls. I've even watched most of Dragon Ball Super into the new... Uh, and that's all the time we have to talk about that. <laughs> fight tournament at where Thank Goku... Thank you so much for your question. Where Goku goes Ultra Instinct. Uh, Micah, what's your favorite breed of cat? And that's a question on there? Yeah. Well, I saw that one on Instagram that was like a cat with rabbit ears, and then I found out it was a filter, and then I felt really sad about it because I'd already shared it with five different people being excited that it existed. So I guess I'd have to say the palace cat. Okay. Which is that it only it, it's like one of the oldest breeds of cat. You can't own it as a cat, but it's like got the dumbest face because it looks like prehistoric and stuff. It's all oh. like, duh, duh, duh. and it's like all stocky and cool. T- look it up. P-A-L-A-S. All right. It's Palace. my current fave of the cat of the week. Cat of the week. Micah's cat of the week. Uncle Jemima says, I've been in love with Micah and Tim for a while now, and they still make me bust like no other. Damn, you just know that laptop is crusty as hell. I'm surprised he can get it open. Karen <laughs> uh, Carid- Derek says, news, what happened? That's my favorite segment. Please, Micah, quit news blocking Tim. I'll stop news blocking him when he can get even one trivial pursuit question right. I can get one right. Okay. Ugh. No, you we're not. Pick no, one off, pick one off a card. You here. already got the news back with unfair. You games. can look at all of them on the card. You can pick one that you think I won't get, and if I get it right, I get the news back. Wow, it really feels like you don't want to fall in love with me. We can keep that segment too. I hate the news. Why would I do this? I don't know. Uh, this is, well, Lori Smith says, "Micah looking pretty today. Is she still going out with John O'Donnell?" <laughs> <laughs> are you still going out with John O'Donnell, my What the Micah? fuck? Lori, what are you fucking talking about? She wants to, Well, she said you were looking pretty good, and she's wondering if you're still fucking <laughs> smashing with John O'Donnell. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Lori, but that relationship is over. I'm with Tim now. Really? For the last four plus years. Is that true? Yeah. You're not with John O'Donnell at all? No. J. Fod, is Jay gone? I'm sorry to break up with him over this spot. All right, are we doing one trivia question? Yeah, but I get to pick the one. Okay, you get to pick the one, and if I get it right, we get the news immediately. Not I will, today. Yes, we get it today. I get to I get to pick up a funny... Are you ready to even do the news? I will be here in a second. All right, go ahead. I'm reading them all. You're reading them all, and I'm looking up a news. Uh, oh, you wouldn't like that. Wait. Oh, no, that's okay. Um... Okay, here. I got I got some. Okay, no. I got one. Wait, oh wait, no, that is a a video. Um Okay, 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 okay. All right, Tim. Okay. Okay, if okay, you okay, get okay, this okay, wrong, okay. you don't even get to play for the news for a month. Uh, that's tough because you cuz I said to pick one that you know I'm going to get wrong. So I don't want to agree to that. Uh-huh. So no, no. I, the what deal happens is, when? What do I win for even playing this? Give me, give me some. In, uh, mm, five bucks. Five, five bucks. What are you fucking talking about? I need five bucks. All right. Well, then I don't know. You win a nice week, a nice birthday weekend where I don't complain about being out on the beach at all. You were already supposed to give me that for my birthday. I know. I That's was my birthday present. <laughs> That's what I was gonna give you anyway. But. Just ask the question. All right. What is the setting oh, God. for Sarah Shepard's Pretty Little Liars novels? Oh, no. Oh, wait. You're not going to get this. Oh, wait. We did this question before. No, did no, you, no, did no. Did you pull from the um, used pile? No, 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 no. No, we didn't do this question before, but you watch Pretty Little Liars. Isn't it based in Mississippi? Interesting. 
Is it I, I, Mississippi is coming into my mind? Interesting, interesting. There was a black lady, right? Yeah. Oh wait, what's the one where the house is on fire? Is that Pretty Little Liars? I'd love to help you, but there's so much at stake right now. Is that a? But I, am I thinking of the right thing? No, or you're was, not. You are thinking of Little Fires Everywhere. Oh fuck! Okay, now we're co- okay. Was Adam Scott in Pretty Little Liars? I cannot confirm or deny that. I am going to say Cape Cod. Okay. I have never seen Pretty Little Liars. They are talking about the novel, and the location is Rosewood Day School. Oh, damn it. I didn't know that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, no news today. I tried for you, gang. I really did. I had no idea about that. I don't even know what Pretty Little Liars fucking is, to be honest with you. I think it's basically like a gossip girl. Oh, yes. Actually, I think that might have been a question at some point, but who knows? Um, So we've done reviews for the pod. Fun party story or tip for being a great hang? Do we have anything today? Oh, um, yeah, I have a tip for being um, for being a great hang, actually. All right, go ahead. Damn. All right. uh, So let me ask you this. What is the best place to position yourself at a social event or a party? Chair. Sit down. Sit down somewhere. I'd always just sit down. I guess... I guess in the middle of everything, I take a chair and I put it right in the middle of the room so that everyone has to walk around me. Interesting obstacle. That may that may be a good idea, you know, because that's also a conversation starter. You know, like, what are you doing? What are you, are you doing? doing yeah, this? there's no chairs in this room. Where did you even find that? You brought, brought your own with, chair. Brought it with me from home. Fucking, why are you farting? What's happening? Um, I had a McDonald's before I came here. I had a McDonald's Taco Bell uh, burrito. I chopped up a Big Mac, put it in a five layer burrito. Ate that when I got here. Brought my metal chair so my farts would resonate so off let's, of it. Let's say that you want you don't want to carry your own chair to a party or make people look down at you while you, they talk. Okay. Um, the a great place to put yourself at a work event. Top or of party. a ladder. You get on a ladder <laughs> and you sit on the ladder. Yeah, and everyone will think you're the painter from Murphy Brown. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was his name? I don't know. I never watched Murphy Brown in my fucking life. I want, let's let's watch Murphy Brown reruns tonight. I don't want to watch Murphy Brown. I'd rather game Candace than watch Candace Bergen Murphy. rules. All right. Anyway, the best place to position yourself um, is near the bar, not in the bar, but like off to the offside, so where people would go right after they've gotten their drink. Because by that time, they've already walked into the party, they've said hello to people, and they get nervous before they get their drink. So then once they get a drink, the first thing they want to do is find somebody to talk to so that way they're not standing alone. And so that's the best place for you to be. So you can rescue them and also find someone to talk to. That's interesting. That's actually a pretty good tip. Yep. I think a better tip is sit on a ladder and make people say, where did that ladder come from? And you tell them you brought it from home. And uh, they're like, why did you bring a ladder from home? He says, so I can look down on all you fucking clowns while you and fucking clown around. And then spill paint on them. And, and then spell- say, this is, this is the prom. And yeah. you're Carrie. You spill paint on, I, on one lucky party goer. That would be, a, every party needs drama. That's also a good party tip. Maybe we've done that before. Yeah. But every good party needs some drama. Oh, I love starting drama. Start drama at work all the time. Like when I told everybody that Tommy was voted funniest uh, game show host. That started so much drama. It was incredible. It was like working at Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> uh, all right, Micah, we are down to our second to last one. Speak ill of the dead. Yeah. Did you come up with a dead today? Uh, of course I did. You told me to, so obviously I did that. Okay, so I'll go first. I got Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus. Whoa. Old Emperor Nero himself. The basis for the number 666, the mark of the beast. Oh, shit. Is Nero. And we know I love Satan. I love Satan, but fucking all our uh, our dead people that we talk shit about. So Nero, I hope you're down in hell like you should be, you piece of shit. That's in the revelations. That's who they're talking about. That's like the when they say six six six, the mark of the beast. They're talking about Nero. Oh, cool. So Nero, I'm hope you're getting butt fucked by the damn devil. I hope he's really taking it to you. It sounds like he's getting ideas from Nero. Yeah, he might be. He might be. I hope. I hope uh, Satan nuts in your vomitorium, bitch. Yeah, bitch. 
All right, and I'm going to speak ill of someone who I believe you've already spoken ill of, but I have more to say, and that is uh, Lisa Marie Presley. Did wow. we speak ill of her? I don't know. Uh, probably. We probably. talked shit about her when she, right when she died, I'm pretty sure. But now new evidence has come out about how she died. On the toilet? Uh, she died because she had a shit blockage. And you know what? It That's is. nasty. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. That's fucking nasty. <laughs> that is nasty. You know what, Micah? Bitch, you nasty. You nasty. <laughs> fucking you rot in hell, Damn. Lisa Marie. Micah, you are it right. It took people months to figure out you had so much <laughs> shit in your colon, you died. <laughs> That's Damn. fucking nasty. Damn, bitch, nasty. You got a fucking clogged up ass, and I when it God when the devil buck fucks you, you know he's going to get Hard pieces of poop on his dick on the way out. The devil gonna get a nasty ass poo pencil. That's <laughs> nasty. Pew, pew, pew. You know what a poo pencil is? I I mean, it's obvious based on context. All right, what is it, Micah? It's a shit covered dick after you've butt fucked somebody. Even grosser. It's when you butt fuck someone with shit in their ass and the shit gets in your pee hole. And then you squeeze. <laughs> and then, then you write with the tip of your dick. And then you squeeze the urethra and it comes out like. Uh, a like retractable le- pencil? Yeah, like lead in a pencil. Oh, I think it'd be funnier if you wrote your name on their back with in their shit with your pencil shit dick. Uh, all right. For, the word funny, I think, is getting thrown around like crazy. I think that would be disgusting. <laughs> I think that would be a but disgusting But what if they thing. wrote something funny like the N word? <laughs> What? Nasty. (laughs) You nasty. Yeah, that's funny. All right, well, that's it, Micah. That's the end of the show. We did it. We got through it. Hell yeah. We started out not vibing. We got into a real role of vibing. I got into a much better mood during the show. Should we start over? Yeah. So that way the audience... Hello, and welcome to Great Hang, the greatest hang that ever hanged. I'm your hang, Tim McLaughlin, coming to you with your other hang. Micah Fox. Hello, Micah. Hey, Timmy. How, How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, that's great. And signing off, it is I, <laughs> the man of a million voices. <laughs> he started off the podcast so well, but then his life turned upside down. <laughs> he had to do his sign off. If it isn't Tuesdays with Maury... It's Tuesdays with babies. It's a baby with cancer or whatever. Remember? Whatever. We could do like a whole series. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, obviously the, the, um, the, what's the second one you call it? The sequel. Yeah. The sequel's gotta be better than the first. Cause then what if she has like triplets? <laughs> yeah. Look who's not talking. <laughs> Anyways, signing off. It is I, the greatest man that ever lived. Your Patreon dad, your free feed, best friend. Timothy Grady McLaughlin the second. Check out uh, Weekend at Babies. And signing off, it is me, the nicest woman in the world. Whoa! The woman who cannot wait to kill a baby cinematically and then pretend that it's alive for four whole months. Uh... And the woman who bought so many lottery tickets that if I win, I will never admit it, but you guys will know. It is me, Toey's mom, Mm -hmm. Tim's girlfriend, podcast co-host, and your host and friend, Micah Fox. And I hope you guys have a a great great rest rest of of the the day. day. I came up with a song I want to do real quick. There was a little baby who didn't survive. But his mom became free of the worry of responsibility. And did you know that she lied to all of her co-workers so that she could eat, pray, love? We can have babies! babies. <laughs> all right. Have a good night. Bye. <laughs>